In this video, we're going to take a look at optimization or optimizing applied problems by finding the minimum or maximum. Let's do this question together. And I've got the steps written on the left and the question on the right. So let's start with the question. Build a rectangular pen with three parallel partitions using 500 feet of fencing. What dimensions will maximize the total area of the pen? Now, before we start this, I wanna point out that the way you handle this is somewhat individualized. So it's all going to be based on how you do part one. Part one says sketch a diagram of the problem if you're able. So you are able in this case. When you're not able, it's when the problem is very abstract. Like two times a number is equal to three times that number minus 17. I can't draw a picture of that, but I can draw a picture of a rectangular pen that I have partitioned into three parallel partitions. So you might be saying, oh, well, I would have done it like this. Well, then the way you set up your problem is gonna be a little bit different than mine, but we're still gonna get the same answers, okay? So step one, sketch the diagram, include any given quantities and variables for anything we need to determine. So what do we need to determine? We're going to have to use the fact that we're maximizing the total area and that we have 500 feet of fencing. So I don't really have anything I can put on my picture except that I'm going to give it some variables so that when I do the rest of this question, everything's going to make sense. I'm going to be solving for the variables. So the, air, the variables are going to be the dimensions. So when I solve, that's what I'm going to end up solving for. Step two. Write the primary equation, which is the equation that you're trying to minimize or maximize. In this case, I'm trying to maximize the total area. So based on my picture, and this is where I, says it, where I said it's very individualized, based on my picture, I would find my area by taking x times y, because that would account for all of the area inside all of the pens, all three pens. If you drew your picture differently, your equation might look a little bit different. But again, in the end, we should get the same uh, solution. Step three. Now we're going to write a secondary equation using essentially any information we haven't used yet. So the only thing we really haven't used is that we have 500 feet of fencing. So looking at my picture, if I'm talking about linear feet of fencing, I know I'm going to have to use X fencing here, X fencing here, X fencing here, and X fencing here. So four X's. And then Y fencing here and Y fencing here. So plus two Y. So that's my secondary equation. And then I'm going to notice it has at least one variable from your primary equation. And then sort of half of four is isolate the, a variable. So I'm going to isolate either X or Y. And the question is, which one should I isolate? And the answer is whichever one you feel like. But for instance, let's say I chose to isolate the X. That would give me 4X is equal to 500 minus 2Y. And then if I divided by 4, now I'm ending up with 1 half Y which let's just not make extra work for ourselves. So instead, what if I just isolated 2y? 2y is equal to 500 minus 4x. Divide everything by 2. y is equal to 250 minus um, 2x. So that's what I'm going to use. And the other part of step 4 is to then plug that back into the primary equation. So over here, I have a equals x times y. And instead of y, I'm plugging in 250 minus 2x. And then I'm just going to simplify that. So I have area is equal to 250x minus 2x squared. Now I'm going to find the derivative of that equation. a prime is equal to 250 minus 4x and then I'm going to set it equal to 0. So 250 minus 4x, I'm going to add 4x, I'm going to divide 
by 4 to get 62.5. That is my critical value. Now, notice I want to maximize this. So I need to show that it's going to be um, a max in my equation. And the, again, the easiest way to do that is to, let me pick a color. Let's use green. The easiest way to do that is just to make your table. So 0 to 62.5, 62.5 to, now I'm going to stop right here for a second. If you're reading your textbook as a companion, your textbook says, make sure you determine a feasible domain for your question. And I find that a lot of students really struggle with that. So for my class, I'm not super concerned about a feasible domain. The thing that you need to watch out for is when you're plugging in a test point, make sure your test point is close to this value. So if you want to learn how to find a feasible domain, think about this question, this part of the question, and I'm trying to find a feasible domain for X. So let's just make Y equal to zero. So you would say 500 is equal to 4X. We would divide by four and that would give me 125 equals X. So you can use 125 here, um, or you can use infinity because honestly, I don't care. Um, but again, when I'm choosing my test point, make sure that you're choosing a point close to whatever that first value is. So I'm going to plug in to my derivative equation, a test point, say 50. If I chose 50, it would be 250 minus 200, which is positive. And then if I chose, say, 70, it would be 250 minus 280, which is negative. Now, this shows me that this is a max. So a lot of students of mine skip this, and they don't show me that it is a maximum. I want to prove that this is a maximum. So what will the dimensions be? Well, I know that um, x is going to be 62.5. Now I'm going to find y based on that. So y is 250 minus 2 times 62.5, which is 125. So 250 minus 125 is 125. So the last part of this is to then write a sentence that say, um, and the question says, what dimensions will maximize the total area? So I don't have to give the total area. I can just say the dimensions of the pen are 62.5 feet by 125 feet. Now that's when you always go back to the question and make sure you've answered every part of it. If it said, and what is the area, then you should multiply those to find the area. If it doesn't, don't do the extra work. Here's another question for us to try. Feel free to work ahead of me if you're feeling comfortable with this. So here I have an open rectangular box with a square base. So what I'm looking at is essentially a three dimensional box it doesn't matter if you suck at drawing like I do. So I have a three dimensional box and the base is square. So these two values have to be the same and it's open. And because it's open, that means there's no top. So this is what my picture is going to look like. So sketch, check, check, except that obviously I need some sort of value to represent the height of that box because I'm solving for the dimensions, so that's gonna be my variables, and I'm trying to maximize volume, largest possible volume. So now primary equation. Primary equation is the, whatever I'm trying to maximize or minimize. Here, largest poss possible volume means volume is going to be the area of the base multiplied by the height. So if you're a little bit rusty on all of your finding areas, surface area, volume. There is a table in the back of your textbook you can look at or you can you know, search YouTube. I have some videos on it. I'm sure a lot of other YouTubers have videos on finding area, surface area, and so forth. But in general, if you have a three-dimensional figure and you're finding the volume, you're going to find the area of the base and you're gonna multiply it by the height. And so in this case, the area of the base is x times x, 
and the height is y. So that's my volume. Now, that's two. Secondary equation. My secondary equation uses whatever number is given to me in the question, and it's also going to use, obviously, the x's and the y's. So 48 square feet represents area because it's square feet. So really, I'm talking about surface area. So surface area is going to just be the sum of all the areas of if you think about the figure. So if I'm thinking about this figure, if I was finding the area of the base, so surface area, I'm going to use 48 square feet. And then here I'm going to say, well, if I was finding the area of the base, that would be x squared. And now there's no top, so there's just one x squared. And then if I were finding, say, the area of this side, well, that would be x times y. And if I were finding the area of this back portion, that would be x times y. And this side would be x times y. And this front part would be x times y. So really, I have four sections that are the same. So 4xy. And now I'm going to isolate that. I'm going to isolate a variable. So obviously, because I have an x here and an x here, that would be really a lot more difficult to isolate. So I don't recommend that. I'm going to isolate the y. So you do you, but I'm going to isolate the y. So 4xy equals 48 minus x squared. Divide everything by 4x. And that gives me y equals 12 divided by x minus x divided by 4, because we have some cancellations occurring. Now I'm going to plug it back in. I'm going to substitute. So I'm going to go back to my green, and I'm going to write x squared times y. And y is going to be replaced by 12x minus x over 4. And I'm going to, again, just substitute and then simplify. So this is 12x squared over x, or just 12x, and then minus x cubed over 4. Now I'm going to differentiate. Now that I've simplified it, I'm going to find v prime. So the der derivative of 12x is 12. The derivative of x cubed over 4 is 3x squared over 4. I'm now going to obviously find the critical numbers. So 0 equals 12 minus 3x squared over 4. I'm going to add the 3x squared over 4 to each side. I'm going to run out of room to show this work. So I've got 3x squared equals 48 x squared is equal to 16, x is equal to plus or minus 4. Obviously, this is a story problem. So I'm not going to use the value of negative 4 because it doesn't have any, doesn't make any sense in the context of my question. So I'm going to use the first derivative test now, and I'm going to use 0 to positive 4 and 4 to you know, whatever you want to use. So I'm just going to use infinity. Um, if you really want to get technical, you can go back to this equation and find out what it's feasible for x to be. So even just thinking about the square root of 48 and using that value as your upper bound, that's totally up to you. I'm not really concerned about it. So I'm going to go ahead and use the first derivative test. I'm going to use, say, 2. And again, I'm plugging it back into that derivative equation, which is here. So if I plugged in 2, I would get 12 minus, um, let's see, 3. 12 minus 3. So that's positive. And then 4 to infinity. So let's say I do 5 or 6 or whatever. I'm going to get a much bigger value than 12 here, and that's going to give me a negative. So this shows that it is a maximum, 
And so therefore we know that the X value is equal to four, but what is the Y value? Um, the Y value is going to be, well, let's go ahead and use 12 over four minus four over four. So that's three minus one or two. So I just used this equation right here. So to maximize the volume, the dimensions would be four feet by four feet by two feet. Now, notice again, it didn't say, and what is the volume? If it, if it did say, what is the volume? Then I would say, you know, four times four is 16 times two is 32. So with a volume of 32 cubic feet. But if it didn't ask that, I don't need to include it. Optimization can be very difficult. So I'm giving you three more questions to practice. And on these questions, we're actually going to go through them in the next video. So I'm giving them to you now so that you can, you know, take your time, work through them, find the solutions. And then we will go through the solutions together in the next video. Up next, we're simply going to go through the questions that I've just assigned you. Um, so please do those before moving on to the next video.